Over the past week or so, we've been transforming our blown up budget 50cc drift cart into a crazy 125cc four stroke, four speed death cart. And it's been a lot of fun, but today I'm absolutely determined to get this thing started for the first time. Which could be an issue considering there is literally no motor in the frame at the moment. But let's be fair, we do love a good challenge on this channel. We are now in day seven of the 12 days of Mikemas, where we're doing daily vlogging every day up until Christmas and doing giveaways in every single video. Last video we gave away a $100 drop the anchor voucher to Wayne Summers, shout out Wayne. And thank you to everyone who left a comment on the last video. I honestly wish I could give something to each and every one of you because you're all freaking awesome. Luckily, you've got another chance because in this video, I'm giving away a two-step garage package, including a window banner, shift knob, wheel nuts, air freshener, and garage banner. This time I'm keeping it simple. All you have to do is comment on the video to be in to win. I'll send this package to anyone, anywhere in the world. So leave a comment and good luck. Phew. So our motor's currently sitting on the ground and we cannot put it back into the frame until this frame is reinforced enough to accept the power and torque that this motor is gonna put out. So here I have some box tube and we're gonna weld this into our frame. My plan is to add some cross sections and straight section to strengthen up the kinks that we have in our tube. By the way, thank you to everyone who gave me advice on how to bend tube without kinking it. I wish I knew that beforehand, but at least I'm learning and I'll use that knowledge moving forward. I've also got some thick steel plate right here that we're gonna cut up to triangulate these pieces here to add strength so that this doesn't fall apart when we're zooming down the street. So it is that time again, let's get cutting and welding. Now that is a little more like it. So I've welded in a couple of X braces. Bear in mind, they're just welded in at the top at the moment because obviously I've got to go over the whole frame and finish all of the welds. I kind of went a little bit overboard here, but I'd rather go overboard than have this thing fall apart on me. The question I have for you is, do you think that we should cover this in sheet metal over the top or do you think we should leave the X braces exposed? I kind of like the exposed look, but also the sheet metal over the top would be super clean. But now it is time to remove our rear axle, reinforce this area, fix this area where the chain's supposed to come through, and then we we should be Mickey Mouse to throw the engine back in. putting in work. The rear end is now reinforced, so welded a big thick blue plate up here on each side up front, and then also welded in brackets down the back here so that kind of triangulates to this area so that there's heaps of strength through that now. Did the same on both sides. I also fixed this area. So I cut the part that was blocking the chain out and put another 90 in here. Now we should have heaps of clearance for our chain sprocket, which is freaking sweet. But we're already running out of time today. I am on a freaking time crunch. So I'm gonna put the rear axle back in. And we're gonna put the engine in. I wanna see if I can start it. I am not well versed with this engine or the loom or anything. So there might be a little bit of mucking around here and there to try and get it all plugged in and kind of figure out how it goes. So less talking, more working. Let's throw the rear axle back in. We've got to get this thing started. Come on. Let's go. That is not light. So our engine is back in and our Mad Max looking death cart. The chassis no longer flexes when I push on it, which is nice. So all these reinforcements we've done have definitely helped. I cannot wait to tidy everything up because I'm gonna round like all these corners, cap everything off like this, make it all look super tidy. But of course, we need to make it work before we make it look pretty. And that is our next job. So here we have the wiring loom and the battery. 
This is actually a pretty intense loom, considering the last motor that literally just had one coil and a couple of wires. This has a bunch of everything going on, so uh, it's not gonna be as straightforward as the last motor. At the moment, we're just gonna dummy everything up. So I will fit the carburetor properly now. We're gonna bolt that on. Then we'll figure out this whole wiring loom stuff and kind of hook it up to the battery and see if we can't get this thing running. Of course, we need to change the oil before we run it. One of you guys gave me that advice in the comments and reminded me, and I appreciate that because that's definitely something that I would forget. First things first, let's fit this carburetor. That is hella satisfying. The carburetor comes with a little plastic adapter, O-ring here, that goes on here, then there's an O-ring on the back, and it simply bolts up right here. So you guys will be very proud of the rig that we have set up here. So here is the fuel. We've cable tied it to the steering wheel for now and it's going into our carburetor. Now I've attached the loom to the motor. There's just a couple of wires that we're not sure about. So they're all color coded apart from two. There are two yellows and there's one yellow and one white here. So we might have to take a chance with that one. But I've got the battery hooked up to the starter. So all I have to do now is plug the spark plug lead on. So that just goes right here. Just like that. I think we're actually, no, we're not ready to start. We're gonna drop the oil, see? It's a good thing you reminded me. Let's do it. Proof that I'm changing the oil <laughs> before we start it. Oil plug. Oh, the oil's brand new in it. Why are we changing it? <laughs> That's fresh as hell. Bailey is doing the honors, wearing a beautiful drop the anchor hoodie, may I say. Thank you Autobahn for the oil, which is going into our new 125cc motor. Via the Shiwi. And it's getting the best 10 tenths racing oil as well. <laughs> Apparently they take 900 millimeters. 900 mils? Mil millimeters. Not millimeters, <laughs> milliliters. Maybe stop now and we'll yeah, just check yeah, it. Yeah, we'll see where it's at. I mean, you need to put that much in it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, it is the moment of truth. I think everything is hooked up where it needs to be. One of the wires we had to just kind of plug in because it's like a white going to a yellow and we're kind of unsure about that. But nonetheless, here we go, I think. Uh, I get to push a freaking start button instead of pull a cord, which is kind of cool. I need to hook up a throttle cable because I have no way of actually pulling the throttle at the moment. That is so funny. That sounds absolutely ridiculous considering it doesn't even have an exhaust on it at the moment. <laughs> All right, take two of starting our motor for the first time because now we have a throttle hooked up. So I can effectively just push this guy and it should go. Ready? Flames. Does that mean if I straight pipe it, it's gonna be like a pop bang boy? Yeah. That is absolutely mental. You can kind of hear the torque in the motor compared to <laughs> the two stroke. The two stroke was tinny as hell. This is this guy's keen to go. Also, uh, for anyone who's like, man, you just started a new motor and we're revving the, the hell out of it. Oh, sorry, I got G'd up. This is what I do. Well, there you have it. The thing freaking runs and it actually runs really well. A couple of things that surprised me. How easily that thing started. How amazing the electric start is, but also so it throws freaking flames, which is actually crazy and was completely unexpected. But of course it does, because it's a four stroke. We're gonna build an exhaust for this thing. Definitely gonna straight pipe it. Definitely gonna put some kind of flamethrower kit on it at some point. But we've already started looking up fuel injection kits for the turbos, because you know we're gonna turbo this thing eventually. The carburetors are just kind of annoying when it comes to turboing. So if you can somehow run fuel injection on the motor, you have a lot more control over the tunability of the motor. So that is it for today's video, guys. An absolute whopper of a video as well. I'm so freaking stoked on this thing. I had it on the ground before as well, just to kind of get a look at it. I checked out the seat position as well, and I'm super stoked with how this thing is coming along. We've still got a bunch of stuff to do to it, all the pedals, everything like that. So we've got a long way to go yet, but I'm still crossing fingers that we can get this thing driving before the end of the 12 days of Mikemas. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget, leave a comment below, and you'll be in the draw to win the two-step garage package. Thank you guys as always for the awesome support. I'll see you in the next video. You poos! This thing freaking runs and it throws flames. Hell yeah. Bye!